everyone, I'm Isidro to Deepthi Karya and today we'll discuss about the topic transaction of spinal cord. Now, this transaction we will discuss about complete transaction of spinal cord, incomplete transaction and hemi section of the spinal cord. Now, starting with complete transaction of spinal cord. Here, what are the causes of complete transaction? Maybe because of bullet injury that causes dislocation of spinal cord. Spinal cord is dislocated and completely transacted. Accidental dislocation may be the cause, compression by the bone fragment or by hematoma or by compression by disc, disc prolapse, disc material. These are also other causes. Occlusion of the blood vessel that also results in the transaction of spinal cord. Now, what are the effects? Immediately when there is complete transaction, person feels like he or she is divided in two halves. Immediately, there is loss of sensation as well as voluntary movement below the level of transaction, below that. So, person feels that he or she is divided in two halves. Now, this effects, they start appearing in three stages. Number one, that is stage of spinal shock. Second is stage of reflex activity and third is stage of reflex failure. Now, starting with first one, that is stage of spinal shock. Here, what happens in this stage of spinal shock? Immediately after injury, as I told you, cessation of all the functions and activities below the level of lesion. Suppose here is the lesion. Below the level of lesion, all the activities are lost. And effects or which type of activities are lost, that depends on level of injury. Means, if suppose the complete transaction is there in the cervical region, cervical segments, most of the time it is fatal because of cutting of the connection between respiratory and cardiovascular centers to the respiratory muscles. Okay? And immediately after complete uh, transaction, as I told you, person feels that he or she is divided in two halves. Then if the lesion is there uh, in thoracic segment, that is paralysis of the upper limb. If there is lesion in the cervical segment, paralysis of all the four limbs, quadriplegia or tetraplegia. If lumbar and sacral segments are involved, then paraplegia, lower limbs are paralyzed. Now, which type of paralysis is found? That is flaccid paralysis. Tone of the muscle is lost. Tone of the muscle is lost. Okay. Then all the reflexes are lost. Okay. Why all the reflexes are lost? Because for reflex action, you can see here in the spinal cord, we require anterior and posterior roots. The sensory neuron and motor neuron and because of injury this all connections are lost so all the reflexes are lost all the sensations are also lost because of injury to the posterior nerve root which carries all the sensory tracts visceral organs bowel and bladder are paralyzed urinary bladder and rectum okay. rectum may not be paralyzed but uh, bowel becomes hypotonic and it may produce constipation Panis becomes flaccid, erection is not possible and when the lesion is at T6 level, all impulses coming from the abdominal viscera are cut off from the brain and gripping sensation or distension of viscera are not appreciated. Okay. Then vasomotor effects, heart rate, heart rate decreases and pulse becomes weak and 3D. Venous return is decreased very much and what is the cause of decrease in the venous return because of flaccid paralysis, muscle tone is lost. So, muscle tone is re reduced or lost that results in decrease in the venous return. Now, what are the effects on the blood pressure? Uh, for blood pressure, we have sympathetic fibers to regulate blood pressure. So, sympathetic vasoconstrictor fibers, they leave spinal cord between T1 to L2 segments. T1 to L2. So, if the lesion is below the L2 segments, okay, blood pressure is not affected. Blood pressure is not affected. Okay, below this L2. Huh? And if the lesion is at or above the T1 segment, there is drastic fall in the blood pressure. Mean arterial pressure falls from 100 millimeter of mercury to mean, mean, I think all of you are knowing, diastolic blood pressure plus one third of, one third of pulse pressure, that is equal to mean arterial pressure, that is normal is 100 mmHg and it falls to 40 millimeter of mercury. And also, it may be because of the paralysis of the muscle and the movement of the muscles are absent and circulation is affected. Okay. Another, uh, because of this paralysis and decrease in the movement that results in dry, uh, scaly skin, sometimes bed sores also they appear. Okay. Now, this severity as we have discussed uh, depends on the level of the lesion we have already discussed. Then, duration of the stage of spinal shock. This stage of spinal shock duration, it depends on the encephalization. 
okay? Evolution or encephalization. If the animal is higher, the duration is long. So it is longest in human being about three weeks. In amphibian, it is few minutes. In dogs and cats, it is few hours. And in monkeys, it is few days. Okay? So why is it so? Because uh, in higher animals, entire nervous system is integrated as a functional unit. Okay? And therefore, damage to any one part of the nervous system, the, it disturbs smoothness and uh, walking system, walking activity, functional failure of all the system. And this is known as diastasis. Diastasis. So, this is about first stage that we have discussed, stage of spinal shock. Now, second stage, that is stage of reflex activity after three weeks. When, if the person, if the patient survives, if the animal survives, then functions are gained back after three weeks. And it depends on the general health of the individual. Here, development uh, or you can say F reflex activity comes in stages. So, first of all, functional activity of the smooth muscle, it returns first. Okay. So, urinary bladder and bowel they are uh, trying to get their tone. But here the evacuation is automatic. Automatic or autonomic. Automatic. Reflex evacuation of urinary bladder and ectum is there. Second one that is sympathetic tone of the blood vessel it returns. Okay, That results in fluctuation in the blood pressure. Blood pressure fluctuates. Sympathetic tone of the blood vessels regain. Uh, when connector cells of the spinal cords they begin to act independently to the vasomotor center. So now they are not under control of vasomotor center. They are uh, trying their own sympathetic tone to restore the blood pressure. Next is sweating. Sweat secretion starts and skin uh, becomes moist. Bed sores, they start healing. Okay. Then uh, tone of the flexion muscle, very important here. In complete transaction, flexion muscle tone comes first. So there is paraplegia in flexion. Okay. Uh, vesting of the muscle is absent here because voluntary movements are absent, but they are in constant reflex activity. Okay, denervated hypersensitivity to the mediators released by remaining spinal excitatory endings and collaterals they grow from a excitatory input. So you can say that uh, there is reflex uh, recovery, reflex excitability. We can see it as. Then comes Babinski sign is positive. First reflex appears is Babinski sign. We have uh, we have discussed what is Babinski sign when uh, plantar reflex is elevated that uh, produces. Uh, extension plantar reflex or you can say plantar extension and fanning of all the toes and after one to five weeks there is appearance of uh, after one to five weeks of flexure reflexes there is appearance of extension reflexes and extension reflexes are our knee jerk and ankle jerk okay uh, and another important thing here is mass reflex is initiated now what is this mass reflex how to initiate for that you have to scratch the skin of the lower limb or skin below the level of the lesion what are the effects? There is reflex spasm of the lower limb, contraction of abdominal wall. That is one thing. Second, bowel bladder evacuated. The person is having urination defecation. And third is profuse sweating. These three changes only when you are scratching the skin of the lower limb or below the level of lesion. Three things, flexion spasm of lower limb, contraction of abdominal muscle, evacuation of bowel bladder and profuse sweating. What is the reason? Because afferent stimuli, they uh, radiate from one center to another. Suppose this is a uh, center for uh, one reflex action. Hmm? From that, the fibers, they are radiating to other one. So when we are giving one stimulus, you are getting multiple effects. So this is mass reflex. Okay. So that is because of irradiation. Mass reflex can be utilized by paraplegic patient. Sometimes what happens, patient cannot be able to evacuate bowel bladder. Automatic bowel bladder is there. No spinal cord control, no higher center control. So, person, what does he do? He just pinch or stroke the skin and bowel and bladder are evacuated. Okay. So, this is first stage, stage of, uh, sorry, this is second stage, stage of reflex activity. Then third stage, stage of reflex failure. Now, this reflex activity is absent. That is stage of reflex failure. What are the causes for reflex failure? Malnutrition. If the uh, if the person is having spinal shock and nutrition is not given properly or if the person has infection or toxemia. What are the effects of stage of reflex failure? Number one, reflexes cannot be elicited. Reflexes are difficult to elicite. Okay. Second threshold for the reflex is increased. Mass reflex is also absent and muscle vesting is present. Hmm? So one, you have to remember this four. One is 
difficult we cannot initiate reflex easily second threshold for the reflex increases mass reflex is absent and muscles are flaccid and wasting is present so this is about complete transaction of spinal cord second one is incomplete transaction of spinal cord here the whole spinal cord is not transacted but only part of it is transacted here in incomplete transaction also first and third stage stage of spinal shock and stage of reflex failure are same but the middle one stage of reflex activity is different what are the changes here uh, in complete transaction we have discussed paraplegia in flexion here there is paraplegia in extension here tone returns in the extensor muscle first not in the flexion muscles okay why is it so because some of the descending tracks which are descending in the lateral column most laterally like vestibulo spinal and reticulo spinal vestibulo and reticulo spinal they escape from the injury so the person is having extension paraplegia in extension extension paraplegia okay then stretch reflex appears first previous in that one bevinsky appears first here stretch reflex appears first clasp knife reflex or philipson's reflex here what happens uh, when uh, we are trying to uh, this is this is your uh, clasp knife type of spasticity so when we are testing spasticity we are testing tone so we have to perform passive movement so when i am trying to perform passive movement suppose some uh, i am trying to move my limb passively okay so when the forearm is flexed forcefully the resistance to the flexion is abolished suddenly means suppose i am trying to flex the limb so initially there is resistance followed by just loss of resistance hmm? so this is clasp knife effect like we are trying to open or close the knife Okay. so initially we have resistance followed by lack of resistance and mass reflex is also absent here in incomplete transaction of spinal cord so this is about incomplete transaction of spinal cord uh this one then third is hemi section of spinal cord here there is injury which involves lateral half of the spinal cord means this is suppose this is spinal cord okay sorry my diagram is not very perfect but here lateral half is damaged okay here the question may be asked brown sequard syndrome the here brown sequard syndrome okay uh, brown sequard syndrome or brown sequard paralysis okay uh, and what is the cause that is because of hemi section of spinal cord here also the cause is accidental injuries symptoms are immediate effect as same thing stage of spinal shock the person is having flaccid type of paralysis the person is having decrease in muscle tone okay reflexes are abolished okay ha huh. here brown sequard syndrome that was given by the name of the scientist physiologist that is brown sequard who first discovered this condition in 1850 okay ha huh. so here you can see here hemi section of the spinal cord now important thing here is uh there are some changes in sensory and motor changes there are some sensory and motor changes below and at the level of lesion suppose you can see first of all we re recall the tract so we can easily remember you can see here this is anterior spinothalamic tract this one mm, here anterior one this one this yellow one okay this is then this is lateral spinothalamic tract so you can see here anterior lateral spinothalamic tracts they cross whereas fasciculus gracilis cuneatus tractus uh, tract of gold and tract of burdock they will not cross at the spinal segment they cross after medulla okay and cortico spinal pyramidal tracts they also cross below medulla okay so now here you can see suppose here is the lesion now we are discussing changes below the level of lesion so suppose change lesion is here so which tracks are damaged here same side you can see same side your tract of gall and tract of burdock this two they are damaged you can see here so which sensations are lost those sensation carried out by tract of gall and burdock i'll enumerate fine touch tactile localization tactile discrimination proprioception vibration conscious kinesthetic sensation we have discussed with tract of gall and burdock but you can see here spinothalamic tract of this side this one this is spinothalamic it will go to opposite side so they are not damaged so this side person is having sparing of the lesion of spinothalamic so pain and temperature sensation of same side are not lost okay 
those tracks they are damaged those sensations are lost okay pain and temperature sensation of opposite side because opposite side one spinothalamic tracks are damaged okay so same side sensory changes because of lesion of tract of ball and bird okay motor changes you can see here if suppose we are talking about pyramidal tracks hmm? so pyramidal tracks you can see here this pyramidal tract is your this yellow one pyramidal tract uh, sorry this is descending tract we are talking so pyramidal tracks or descending tracks these are all ascending tracks descending one is from this medulla i am drawing here this tracks they end on the lower motor neuron here this one so this track has got lesion so upper motor neuron this is upper motor neuron we have discussed and this is lower motor neuron so upper motor neuron is damaged so upper motor neuron are lesion symptoms of the same side are found and they are spastic type of paralysis superficial reflexes are lost deep reflexes are exaggerated babinski sign is positive muscle wasting is absent and group of muscles are involved okay then opposite side now we we'll discuss about opposite side below the level of lesion here you can see opposite side your spinothalamic track of opposite side you can see i am tracking this spinothalamic of opposite side this is anterior spinothalamic track spinothalamic anteriorly from here this yellow one this one okay this anterior spinothalamic track carries pain and temperature from sorry crude touch from opposite side this is your lateral spinothalamic which carries pain and temperature from opposite side so opposite side pain and temperature sensations are lost but fine sensations are not lost okay so what is brown sequard syndrome you can see below the level of lesion motor loss is excessive and sensory loss is less on the same side okay i repeat you can see here same side sensory loss is only fine sensations are lost but motor loss is upper motor neuron type of paralysis okay and opposite side motor loss is nil but sensory loss that is with sensations are lost pain temperature crude touch pressure tickling itching okay so this is brown sequard syndrome now we discuss about hemisection at the level of lesion suppose lesion is here only so what happens same side all the sensations are lost you can see here because all the tracks they enter or they exit through the spinal cord of the same side so all the sensations are lost on the same side okay because crossed as well as uncrossed all the fibers they are affected okay ha huh. so same side all the sensations are lost hmm? and opposite side so complete anesthesia on the same side ha huh. and same side another important thing this is your lower motor this is upper motor neuron this is lower motor neuron so lower motor neuron is affected so lower motor neuronal lesion is found that is the person is having sorry low motor neuron this one low motor neuron type of paralysis that is the person is having in upper motor neurons spastic paralysis here flaccid paralysis okay then the superficial deep reflexes are lost okay then there is no there is muscle wasting single muscle is involved okay so lower motor so same side all sensation load lost and low motor neuron type of paralysis opposite side only pain and temperature sensations are lost because pain and temperature sensation carrying tracks this one they are crossing here and they are damaged because they are crossing at the same segment pain temperature crude touch anterior and lateral spinothalamic crude touch tickling itching and motor changes no motor changes so this is about effect of hemi section uh at the level of lesion no motor changes on the opposite side and uh pain temperature crude touch pressure tickling itching sensations are affected but gall tract of gall and tract of burdock they are spared so this is all about hemi section of spinal cord thank you so much if you wish to get all pdfs uh of my all lectures uh you can go through the link or you can uh, get the application vesalius a uh, link is given in the description box otherwise you can also download from the play store and you can get the course thank you so much